Okay, uh, we're just so excited to finally know who, when, where, what, just, you know, some of those variables put things into place. We're excited for the opportunity that's in front of us. We feel thrilled with the sixth seed. We feel like that is what our team um, worked hard to earn um, down the stretch. We're playing um, really good basketball and just really excited about the opportunity to showcase that again um, together. Alexis, as a Lincoln resident, can you tell me a little bit of just kind of how this, what this moment means to you and what it kind of means to represent the Huskers in the tournament? Yeah, it's super special, you know, always have dreamt of playing in the March Madness tournament and now that we're succeed, it's super special um, and I'm excited to see uh, what this team is going to do, so. Yeah, for any of you, just to your uh, initial reaction on um, drawing the opponent that you drew. Yeah, I think it's hard to look at all like the projections and the bracketology and stuff because you really never know. So whatever number came out there, I think we were ready for it. And I think it's pretty cool that we got that six seed because I think that we deserve to be that high. Um, and the projections had us um, a little higher than that. So I'm really honored that we were able to get that high. Why do you think you deserve to be that high, Jeff? I just think the way we're playing right now, um, I think this team has had some incredible wins. And if you go go based on how we've played the last like 10 or so games, I think that we are capable of beating any team in the tournament. So I think it's pretty cool that they could recognize that as well. Jazz, you know, six of the players on this roster played in that game in 2022. Just how's that experience going to carry over into this tournament? Yeah, I think it showed that we really wish we had won that game. Um, and I think it shows that we're not content with just being at the tournament. Uh, we really want to go there and we want to prove something. Um, I think that playing in Minnesota really helped us this last week. Um, and now we've had some experience of being in the tournament. It's not as like shell-shocking. It's like I think we're super excited to be able to go on a deep run and believe that we can do that. Have you been in that arena, Jess? I have. What's it like? Um, they get a good crowd out there in Corvallis. Um, I played there a couple of times. They have really good coaching staff and great players. So I'm excited. I mean, I like Oregon, so I'm excited to go back down there. Natalie, is this your first time in the big dance, March Madness? Just what are those emotions going through your head? And then also just how excited are you to play? I'm super excited. I've kind of dreamed of this ever since it came into the picture. Um, and being able to do it with this group and the run we've had so far, I'm really looking forward to what we can do. Is it something you kind of thought coming into your freshman year in Nebraska that this would be your role too, having a big role in the team? I knew what this team was capable of, and I know they didn't make it last year, and my goal was to make it this year, and I think that I was able to help lead the team there. Coach, you guys make a pretty deep run in the uh, Big Ten tournament. Um, just tell me how that kind of propels this team going forward into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, well, I think that um, the way that we played in Minneapolis in the Big Ten tournament and the teams that, you know, we just have so much respect for the the teams that we had to work through in order to get to that championship game and then um, to be in an overtime game. I think it gives us confidence because we know that if you can um, – go and beat Purdue and Michigan State and Maryland and and um, be in an overtime game with Iowa that we're poised to be able to compete with the best teams in the country and um, so we're 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 pleased and thankful for the confidence that that you know that that just playing in the Big Ten gives to us. Alexis you guys did a little dance show and just kind of showed a little bit of character today for all the fans out there just what is the I guess camaraderie around this team. How's that kind of helped on the court as well? Yeah, this team's super close. Um, I was talking to someone earlier today, and um, any moment we get that we're not on the court together, we're spending it either at one of our teammates' house. Um, Ani loves to make food. We watch The Bachelor together. Uh, it just—it's a lot of fun, and um, I feel like people can see that um, in the way that we play and. Um, Coach Williams kind of lets us show our personalities and be ourselves, and um, we're just really close, and it's a lot of fun to play with this team and this program. How have you seen that kind of develop over the time you've been here in Nebraska? I feel like we've always had really close teams here. Um, our coaches do a really good job of recruiting um, really high-character people um, that um, just love being a part of a team, and really the culture here is – not like anywhere else and um, I think just the relationships that I have developed 
through my three years here are forever friends. Um, I still talk to Bella Cravens and Trinity Brady, who I played with as a freshman, and they also come back to Lincoln. And for them, I mean, I just feel like that speaks so highly of this program that people would love to come back to Lincoln, Nebraska to hang out with each other. So. Yeah, it's just hard to put into words just um, the the way that kind of camaraderie and how that feels. And um, I saw to see Coach Ravel here tonight, and and obviously it's pretty well documented that um, that we lean heavily on each other, and and she's been an incredible mentor to me in um, in my time at Nebraska as a as a very experienced head coach that um, that we we share a lot of the same ideas. So having her here means a lot to me um, tonight. But um, you know, but I've received text messages from Will Bolt and John Cook and John, I mean John Walker and and you know like from lots of different head coaches in the department already um, since the announcement of our seating and and opponents and I just think that it's uh, really tight knit. The same thing um, Lex is kind of trying to put into words about our team and our culture and the players that have come through here and the way that they connect with people and just that's what makes things so special, but certainly what makes things pretty special about this athletic department, and I feel honored to be supported by, by so many awesome coaches and support staff here at Nebraska. Alexis, a and is a pretty physical and also tall team. Just, I know this is early, but just how are you guys going to try to use your physicality um, against them? Yeah, playing in the Big Ten, it's pretty physical every game. Um, you play different opponents all season long to prepare you for this moment. And um, we're really just going to trust our training. Um, we gained a lot of confidence from the Big Ten tournament and uh, just do what we do best. What, well, Amy, not a game, but does it feel a little bit like a win to get a get to six seed? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we were, you know, as Jazz mentioned earlier, we were maybe projected in some of the bracketology a little bit lower seed than than that. So um, for us, we felt like the body of work and and um, the the just the strength of our league probably warranted um, a little higher seed than what was being projected. So for us um, to to see our names come up on that six line um, after being projected in a lot of the brackets in the eight line um, was was positive, and um, now it, it it's just we do know that it doesn't matter if you're a six or a seven or an eight or a nine. At this point, every team that you're going to face that's playing in the NCAA tournament is going to be a quality and worthy opponent. And so now it just becomes focusing in on what needs to happen with our game prep. How can we keep getting better as a team so that we're able to be uh, pressing on the gas and making another run? Only so many teams make the NCAA tournament for the women. Only so many teams make it for the men. And both programs made it this year. Um, just what does that mean about, or to any of you, um, about what that says about basketball here at this university? Yeah, I think it's really special. I think it goes to show like the way that Coach Williams and Coach Hoiberg support each other, the way that the men's team support the women's team. I think it's really special to have them in the stands at our games and the same for us to be in the stands for their games. We're always supporting each other and rooting for each other. So I think it's a pretty cool dynamic to have both of us competing in the tournament. Um, it's a super exciting time for this university. Amy, not, not every school does a wash public wash party. Sometimes that's logistics. Why did you decide to do a public watch party this year? To be honest, I left it up to kind of our team captains to make the decision on that and um, to decide. And it was a unanimous vote throughout our team. They just, um, they really wanted to be here to celebrate with our fan base. I think it's just really important that, you know, how special it is for us to play in front of um are the fans all year in Pinnacle Bank Arena, and then to have something really special like this that we could potentially share with them. Uh, we just felt like that was um, an awesome thing that we wanted to share uh, with our fans, but also uh, to give players like Jazz Shelley and Annika Stewart, Maddie Kroll, Darian White, kind of one last time to, to be celebrated out in Pinnacle Bank Arena. 
coach uh, both the men's and women's teams getting paired with Texas A&M doesn't seem like an accident. Did you have a reaction to that? Um, I don't have a reaction other than can you get all of Texas A&M's film loaded on my computer in the next 30 minutes. And um, to be honest with you at this point, um, you know, we just feel like, you know, who's the opponent and let's start our preparation let's start getting ourselves ready to play and and for us there's not much of a reaction to to it other than that you know, like it could be a distraction though with all of the storylines out there for both teams uh, with uh, trev leaving with that it doesn't feel like that to us, that it's any, anything distracting. I mean, um, at this point, we've got a job to do. We've got, we're on a mission. Um, uh, we know what it takes to, to put ourselves in the best position to prepare. And, um, you know, we don't play against the athletic director. I mean, that's just the, the facts. So um, we're, we're not looking at this like a distraction in any way, shape, or form. Uh, just kind of, you've had the week off. Just what has been the message to your team, knowing that you guys were going to get a bid in the NCAA tournament, just kind of having to wait and just wait that week? Um, the message has been that the teams that really tend to flourish are the ones that are not just satisfied with being here, the ones that are continuing to find small ways to improve. And so I think this last week has really provided us an opportunity to kind of take a peek at a couple other tools to put in our toolbox for the tournament and polish some things up, get a little bit better at some things that might be coming our way, playing teams that we haven't seen before, and um, continue to keep trying to find ways to to, to get better. So you've got Natalie Potts, younger player. Um, I know your daughter or daughters were in the audience as well. Just tell me kind of what this moment and this kind of, you know, getting to the tournament, what it means just for those younger players and, and the players who will be coming into the program next season. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, our youngest, younger players that are in our program right now have done an absolutely outstanding job of looking up to the seniors and the veteran players that are in our program and just really um, kind of um, taking a ride on their wings and, and being able to see and understand and be coachable and, and to soak it all in. And, and the, the approach that players like um, Jazz Shelley watching extra film, coming in extra, getting extra work, doing extra shots. You know, Alexis Markowski, her positive self-talk, the way that she approaches things. You know, Maddie Kroll, like she, what she has to do on a daily basis just to be able to be out on the court every day with our team as far as taking care of her body and the amount of hours of treatment and, and just extra that she does to be able to be out there. And all of those things are incredible um, lessons for our younger kids that have just soaked that all up and really understand how you do things to be, you know, with that type of professional approach to put yourself in positions. It's great leadership from our upperclassmen. It's really great leadership even from our underclassmen being willing and ready to take all of that in and soak it up and absorb it. And I, um, I know that um, at least my daughter and our incoming freshman, freshman for next year are also just um, riding this uh, high with us and so excited to be a part of this program. And, um, and we've got a lot of in excitement and energy around our program right now, and we're, we're excited to continue to build on it. Jazz or Lex, why, why did you vote for a public party, watch party tonight? Yeah, we just thought it was really important to have the people that supported us the entire way to have a piece of this win. Um, they were obviously weren't, a lot of them weren't able to be in Minnesota, and we think that uh, we wanted to share that win with them as well. So it was really cool to have them out there today. And um, like I said, like out there, um, no matter where we are, we feel their presence. So I think it was cool that we were able to share that, that with them. Jazz, this being your last ride, just kind of uh, looking back on making the decision to return, just kind of, how do you think that the decision went, and how are you just so thankful to be able to yeah. in the back of the NCAA tournament? Yeah, well, when I was making the decision, it was tough, but like right now, I'm completely over the moon that I came back for another year. This is what I wanted to do, and I'm very appreciative of my teammates uh, wanting to do that with me, and even having freshmen that didn't experience not going to the tournament last year come in just as determined as, as we were to get back to that position. So I'm really grateful for the people I'm able to do this with, and very thankful that I got this opportunity to have another year. Coach, what do you know right now just about Texas A&M? 
Um, I have watched one or two game films throughout the year as we were prepping for uh, other opponents and just, you know, so uh, my husband l watches a lot of film with me at home too. And he was like, oh yeah, I remember when we were scouting and watching Texas A&M kind of as they were playing against one of our other opponents. And so we've got a little bit of knowledge. There's, you know, a player to uh, one of our uh, current freshmen, Logan Nisley, went to the same high school, Bismarck Century, as as uh, Lauren Ware, who plays for Texas A&M. So there will be two uh, Bismarck Century kids on the court playing against each other. There's some familiarity with Lauren and, um, you know, some of their roster. And so uh, my plan is to get even more familiar with them tonight. How, after you played in Minnesota, how many days did you give them off or? How long till you heard somebody bouncing down there, and how long till you had an official? Well, practice? we gave them two days off, and and you know it was two days off, and and maybe against my my better judgment, there was even on that second day off, there were still kids trying to get in the gym and and get shots up, and you know um, you almost have to fight them out out of the gym. But uh, four games in four days, and then we gave them a couple days off. I thought they maybe earned that so um yeah but then we had uh got back after it um after two days off kind of stay in rhythm and and get in the weight room and and do some things this week that i've been really thrilled that we've been able to continue to show marked improvement on anything else all right thank you guys Thanks. thank you, thank you.